Hello and welcome to an Old Faithful Extra from the Tom Frere Residence, which doubles as Cottonwood Studios. My thanks to Keaton and Taylor at Black Hills Blend for hooking us up with the Black Hills Blend coffee. Cheers. A word about imaging before we get started. I usually wear a hat in these videos. Uh, the Code of the West that I learned was that you cannot wear a hat in a residence. I didn't write the Code of the West. I just live by it, Pilgrim. <laughs> That's a, how honorable. Although there are no rules here. There are no rules here? And well, there, there, another, co another tenet of the Code of the West is that the master of the house can do what he wants. So, Tom, you can wear a hat in your house. You bet. But I can't. You can if you want to. Well, I'll thank give you permission. Once, just this once. I should introduce you. You are Tom Freer. I am, that's what they say. You've been on the show before. I have. It's so nice to see you again. It's good to be here. Thanks for having me. You bet. Welcome. Um. Welcome to the show. Hey, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having us Thanks. at your house. There is a picture at the beginning of these episodes that behind the logo, Old Faithful, there's a guitar and an amplifier. It's a, a guitar rig, and it turns out it's not. Uh, a rig that anybody is using in any musical setting. It's a little rig I put together for the purpose of the picture. So this Old Faithful Extra is to showcase that little rig, what I call the extra, picture rig. Extra, extra. Read all about it. And part of the picture rig is Tom Freer's guitar, which is one of the many reasons we are here. Tom Freer, would you tell us about this guitar? Yep, it's the uh, Epiphone Casino. Uh, I couldn't tell you what year exactly. Okay. Probably early 2000s, most, well, mid 2000s maybe. Probably like 2009 to 11 somewhere. Because I got it actually as a high school graduation present. This is the one reason I actually graduated high school. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> it was to earn this guitar. It yeah. didn't do your test for you, did it? Well, uh, no. Oh, okay. I paid someone for that. Oh, okay. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I passed my own test. <laughs> So anyways, yeah, and uh, it's uh, served me well for a lot of years. It was a parts guitar for a while, but um, recently got it up and running a couple years ago. When you say it was a parts guitar, tell us what you mean. Uh, Were you cannibalizing it? Yeah, well, I stole the bridge, the tra uh, trapezoid bridge, oh. for another guitar. Okay. So, you know, the other one was more fun at the time. Sure. But, but yeah, and then I just decided this one was a decent machine and should should stay running so I put it back together put it all back together you have to tell us the story about it <clears throat> where it came from oh, oh man because I love this story yeah so this is actually it's a Best Buy guitar from Lincoln Nebraska okay Best Buy you know like the CD store or whatever CDs, appliances the Geek all that Squad yeah, yeah yeah they used to sell musical instruments I don't know if they still do any of them or not but this was actually a Best Buy guitar and it's the second one that I actually got I had picked out another one, went to put flat wound strings on it, and the low E sheared off the nut right there at the, oh. at the first uh, point. Okay. The first string, All right. the string set. Um, and it sheared it off, so I had to take it back and get another one, so this isn't actually the original one I wanted. But it works. You went, you went marching back in there and said, yeah. look here, Geek Squad. It's like, yeah. Yeah. You give me another guitar. And this one has been an old faithful companion. This was yeah. your number one until the Georgia Rip rose, unless well, I'm mistaken. That and my Strat. Oh, and your Strat. My sure. 97 American. Yeah. Yeah. Those uh, were the two. Things about it that we like here on Old Faithful. Yeah, number right. one, the trapeze tailpiece. We yeah. like that. It's kind of vintaging looking. The chrome covered P90 pickups, which are somewhat uncommon nowadays. Yeah, I like them. I think you see them pretty often. Every well, I don't know, but they sound really good. They're really muddy, really dirty, really bluesy, and you can just well, really, you can pull just about any tone you would really need to out, right. out of them. So really versatile. A short short discussion of the history of pickups. A lot of people say Seth Lover um, invented humbuckers. I say that it's not true. It's fun to say, uh, but. They, they came out with the single coil pickup, and then people wanted more, more of that raw, raw devil sound, which we're going to talk about more today. And they realized that a part of the equation was sending more signal to the pickup. So somebody, and I actually don't know who came up with the P90, but they were a hotter pickup. They sent more signal. It's a fat th single coil. 
it's a fat single coil, okay. And they were kind of, their reign wasn't too long before um, Seth Lover's humbucker came out and kind of stole the show. I pretend to be an expert on this show. It's kind of fun, it, and it's my show so I can. <laughs> on to the other component of the picture rig is this amplifier here, and this is actually my amplifier. Mm -hmm. And I had, I had spent way too much time thinking about the picture that I wanted for this show. I wanted it to be classic looking. I wanted it to not have any logos. Um, something that would get us all in the mindset to see an old faithful instrument. And so I bought this guitar, this amp, excuse me, at a pawn shop. And I drove down here to show my buddy Tom Freer because we are like first graders with cars. Ooh, ooh, ah, ooh. We run around, ooh, I got a new toy, yeah. you got to see it. And yeah. we go show and tell all over the damn town. <laughs> and so I brought this amp, and, and then I remembered this guitar, and I said, hey, Tom, could you get that F phone out? And I took the picture, and it was pretty much exactly what I wanted. This is kind of, sort of, fendery, boxy looking in a black yeah. and white. It's actually a crate amplifier. Yep, good old crate. From what I know, it was... Uh, manufactured in the late 80s or early 90s in St. Louis, Missouri. What we have, ladies and gentlemen, here is a Made in America tube amplifier, which I got for $106. Now, you can make a mistake in America. I know this because I've lived here 41 years. But we all want Made in America stuff, and this, by golly, was Made in America. You and you can find them. Uh, sometimes uh, pretty dang cheap. They were the precursor to the Palomino, which came out after that. Um, no this is a vintage club. Uh, 20 is the model of the amplifier. It's got a single 10 inch speaker, and the speaker actually has been replaced. I had a Jensen Alnico P10Q, I believe, put in, so this is not completely stock. We also have Leah the Ant Turtle here, <laughs> which is kind of a thing that I do. Ant Turtles improve my tone, I found, Tom. <laughs> That's where all the tone is. Right. Uh, this amplifier gets plenty loud for most applications, and nowadays where we can mic the amp and send it to the PA, mm -hmm. the issue of volume is really not an issue. Gigging-wise, it would work just fine. Oh, yeah. I would say, I have used it on a couple of gigs with the Sad and Lonesome Boys. Watch for us appearing at a birthday party near you. Um, this amp is very physically small, and so there's not, they've jammed it all right into a nice tight package. And what that means is the tube, the, the vacuum tubes, don't have much breathing room. And I'm guessing that if you took this out, on the road, your North American tour, and played it cranked five nights in a row, it might overheat. Yeah. And what else? We're going to demonstrate today, uh, and I hope this comes across, the magic of a tube amplifier. By golly, this one's got some magic right here. At a lower wattage of amplifier, with just a little push, they'll start spitting and snarling like nobody's business. Oh, yeah. And they'll make them devil sounds that we all love so much <laughs> that make us want one more beer before we go home. And so we have in our signal chain a compressor pedal. It is a Dan Electro Surf and Turf compressor. And by the way, that's a fine compression pedal. But what we're going to use it for is just a boost. So I'm going to turn the amplifier on. Tom's going to play. Attempt. And then we're going to hit the pedal. And boy, howdy, we're just going to take it. Boy, to howdy, you betcha. <laughs> <laughs> to a whole new level. And then, inspired by a conversation we had before we started taping, this, did I mention this is the home of Cottonwood Studios? Yes, you did, thank you. And, and we were doing, not me, Tom and friends were doing some tracking today. And they, they decided at one point that what they needed was the sound of a cranked amplifier. And... It sounded great right up until it up until my amp blew up. Uh, <laughs> which you know is the price you pay. We'll get it fixed. We'll probably take it to perfect way. Most production. likely, yeah. Barry, I'm coming your way, bud. Yeah, you betcha. Oh, <laughs> uh, we're gonna have to crank the crate and see what happens. Yeah. So, 
we're going to play it somewhat clean. It's hard to do a completely clean. That is one almost drawback of this amp. It doesn't really do clean. We're going to do clean, then we're going to hit the compressor pedal, and then we're going to crank it. Are you ready, Tom? Ready as I'll probably uh, be. Let's see here. Remember my sponsorship with Trask Hay LLC? 5150858, large, round, and square bales. And Blue Saraceno says, change your strings. How's that? It works. All right. <laughs> Let's turn this amp on and see what happens. After you. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, my buddy and the owner of that guitar, Mr. Tom Freer. Everything crank. Do we want to do some more? That would have kind of been the show. Do we want to talk more about stuff?